Imagine a world where food can't grow, we have no clean air to breathe, and all the living things we enjoy, from flowers in our gardens to birds in the park, don't exist. This sounds like some sort of apocalypse, but it's not. This is just what life would look like without insects. You depend on these tiny creatures way more than you realize. But don't feel bad, because most of the life on Earth does too. Trees, fish, humans ourselves, none of us can survive if insects aren't around. And trust me, you wouldn't want to live in a world without them in it. Today, we are going to show you why. People's thoughts about insects usually boil down to one of two things. Either they don't find them interesting enough to think about much, or they're terrified of them and avoid them at all costs. And look, I get it. Insects are undeniably weird. They have bizarre adaptations, crazy lifestyles that are hard to relate to, and you can't exactly look at their face and tell what they're feeling. Not the recipe for a group of animals destined to be loved by the masses. However, if you push past the creepy appearances and look a little closer at insects, you will find some of the most fascinating and vitally important stories of any living things on the planet. We did, and I promise you'll never see the world the same way again. My name is Harrison, and this is Evan. We're twin brothers on a mission to help you understand how you fit into the natural world and become an insider in its incredible stories. It's funny. As self-proclaimed bug nerds, we've hunted for insects all around the world. And we've realized that all the things that people hate about these animals are exactly what we love about them. They are weird. They are kind of freaky sometimes. They're like little aliens living all around us that we humans don't actually know that much about. And that makes it all the more exciting to find them in the wild and see what they're really up to. Now, the gap in our understanding of insects is by far the clearest in the tropics, where the highest diversity of species exists. And where we are today in the cloud forests of northern Ecuador is a frontier of our scientific knowledge in the truest sense. There could be as many as 100,000 insect species in this country, many of which are totally new to science. So it's safe to say that we're a bit out of our depth trying to keep up with this level of richness. That is why we are not out here alone. This is Jack. Insect master number one. He travels all over the globe to show you the truth about some of this planet's most unique and dangerous animals. Jack is a walking encyclopedia of insect knowledge and one of their most passionate advocates. So with our efforts combined, we are going to prove why you need insects so much more than you think. The only problem is, the idea that bugs are creepy or dangerous totally dominates our society, and most people would rather kill a bug than watch one. So, when we came across an insect that is widely believed to have a brutally painful sting and an aggressive attitude, we couldn't pass up the chance to show you the truth about these animals in the best way we know how, by getting up close and personal. Ah, a mutillid, a velvet ant. Oh, wow. See? I'm gonna try and get this guy. This is our first velvet ant here in the tropics. Now this is not actually a true ant. Velvet ants are wingless wasps, and many of them are reputed to have quite painful stings, but I have found them to be quite gentle. There we go. Now I will need to check which species this is, but those colors on the abdomen are beautiful. I've actually kind of interested in that behavior that it's doing where it's bouncing its abdomen. I haven't seen other velvet ant species do that before. Do you know why it's doing that, Jack? Uh, usually the flexing of that abdomen can be for a few different reasons, but most likely what it's doing is it's got those two large eye spots and it's flashing that brightly colored component. So why it's doing this behavior is as a warning, letting you know, hey, don't mess with me. I can pack a pretty painful punch if I need to, but as you can see, they're perfectly content to save that precious venom for a real predation event and not us just coming by and abducting them temporarily. <laughs> exactly right. And it just goes to show, if you are gentle, they won't have a reason to be defensive. If I were to try and pin this animal or squeeze it, I might be at risk of taking a sting. But if I'm gentle and I let it move where it wants to go on its own terms, it really isn't going to pose me any threat at all. And on that note, I'm going to put this gal down and let her get back on her way into the cloud forest.
Come on, sweetheart. What a cool insect. What this Velvet Ant encounter proves is that many of the negative things we believe about insects really come from misunderstandings about their behavior. But when it comes down to it, people don't actually know that much about these animals. There's a lot to unpack here, so let's back up. What makes insects so important? The first thing you need to understand about insects is that there are a lot of them. Like, a seriously mind-blowing amount. Insects are by far the most diverse and successful group of animals in history, and today there are over one million known species. And those are just the ones we've described. Estimates of the total number of insect species that exist range from 2 million to a staggering 10 million. To put that in perspective, there are currently around 2.1 million described species of animals in general, which means that about half of all known animals are insects. Pretty insane, right? With this unbelievable diversity comes equally impressive adaptability, which has allowed insects to colonize every continent and practically every ecosystem on the planet outside of the ocean. Now, given how abundant insects are, you can probably imagine that competition for food and other resources gets pretty intense. This has driven insects to heavily specialize their lifestyles to use survival strategies that aren't accessible to other species. And chances are high that for pretty much any ecosystem role you can think of, there's an insect somewhere that carries it out. Some insects are herbivores that eat any kind of plant material that's available. From amazingly camouflaged leaf eaters like katydids, to critical pollinators like butterflies that feed on nectar and fruit sugars, and even powerful beetles that eat the rotting wood of the trees they're born in. No matter what kind of plant they're eating, herbivorous insects provide a great service to their ecosystems, because they are one of the main groups that makes the energy plants produce available to other animals, by becoming food themselves. Many animals can't digest plants very well, or even at all, because of their complex cellular structure, so the herbivores that can allow the plant's nutrients to be used by higher trophic levels, which forms a vital foundation of the food web. And trust me, there are plenty of insects that are more than happy to take advantage of the herbivore's noble sacrifice. Despite what their size might make you think, insects are among the world's best and most abundant carnivores, and this is where their life stories start to get really wild. There are active predators like tiger beetles that chase down their prey with literally blinding speed, while others like army ants use their brute strength and overwhelming numbers to devour anything unfortunate enough to cross the path of a hunting swarm. Believe it or not, the most successful hunters in the world are actually insects too. Dragonflies boast an incredible 95% hunting success rate, which is especially impressive because they catch their prey in mid-air. Carnivorous insects also play a crucial role in the food web, and ironically enough, one of their most important functions is controlling the populations of other insects. Without the huge array of predatory insects as the first check on plant-eating species, the balance of their ecosystems would quickly be lost as plant populations get decimated by overconsumption. Carnivorous insects are also a major link between herbivores and higher-level consumers, so by becoming something else's lunch, they allow energy to move up to larger and more complex organisms. And then there are the unsung heroes of the natural world, the scavengers and detritivores, who have one of the most important but least glamorous jobs imaginable. These guys are responsible for breaking down dead and decaying organisms and waste products in the environment, and they play slightly different but equally essential roles in the process of decomposition. Scavengers like flesh flies are usually the first ones to show up after something dies, so they get the choice cuts, so to speak, of flesh and tissue from the carcass, while detritivores like dung beetles arrive later to clean up the really undesirable bits like leftover meat scraps, skin, bones, and yes, even poop. It may not be pretty, but the nutrient cycle depends on the work these insects do, because without them there would hardly be anyone to recycle organic waste into useful and usable energy. There's no denying the irreplaceable impact that insects have on the natural world, and since they take on so many diverse roles in such a wide variety of ecosystems, there are literally a countless number of connections between insects and other organisms. 
Falls. And as it happens, as we were hiking along a steep cliff, we found something that illustrates these unseen relationships very well. So right up in this mop burrow, we have a colony of what looks like Campanotus, AKA carpenter or sugar ants. If we look all the way in the back, we can see that they're raising eggs and larvae and pupae, which is really, really cool to see them utilizing these old, presumably, I would hope, abandoned mop mop burrows. This is one of these really interesting examples of two life stories that you would never really think about overlapping. A really colorful canopy dwelling bird and a fossorial or living underground species of ant. These two animals are really only crossing paths in this very specific way, but it just goes to show you there are these intricate connections that exist in these ecosystems that if we lose one species, we may have no idea how it will affect animals that you'd never really think are connected in that way. Insects affect every living thing in their ecosystems, but there is probably no better illustration of an unseen connection than us, humans. People don't think about it much, but we depend on insects for an astonishing number of the things we use every day, not to mention all of the things we need them to do to keep our planet livable. In biology, when we talk about the benefits that nature provides to humans, we call those impacts ecosystem services, basically anything good we get from the natural world, from products like food to processes like oxygen production. One of the most important and well-known ecosystem services that insects carry out is pollination, which is the foundation of how most plants reproduce. Because they can't move, plants have to get creative with how they spread their genetic material. So they've solved this problem by hijacking the insects that feed from their flowers. Without this vital service, 80% of the world's flowering plants would be left mostly unable to reproduce. What's more, insects are responsible for pollinating over 75% of global food crops. So if insects aren't around, neither are berries, apples, potatoes, chocolate, and hundreds of other staple foods. This is just one of the ecosystem services that these animals perform, and they generate hundreds of billions of dollars of economic value every year from their activities. All of these critical functions underscore how catastrophic it would be if all insects were to go extinct. But with a mind-blowing 10 quintillion individual insects estimated to live on Earth, surely that's impossible, right? Well, unfortunately, that is not the case. As scientists and nature lovers alike have long noticed that insect populations have been plummeting in recent decades, with some studies asserting that we are losing these animals at a rate of 2% of the global population per year. That may not sound like much, until you consider the fact that if this trend were to continue, in less than 40 years, we would lose about a third of all known animals on the planet. Recent estimates suggest that over 40% of all insect species are threatened with extinction, but the actual number is likely much higher. Because the truth is, we still don't know very much about the declines of insect populations in most of the world. There just isn't enough study being done about these animals in general, much less about their conservation concerns. So what do we do about all this? Well, there's something to be said for the changes we can make in our personal lives to be more insect-friendly with our decisions, such as supporting ethically produced food companies and planting native plants in our gardens to support local insect populations. However, the real solutions to an ecological crisis like this are global in scope, and that means we need a lot more people to be invested in this fight and care about insects. Just taking the time to learn about insects and paying attention to the species in your area is actually a great first step. As the more eyes we have on insects around the world, the better we can understand the severity of their loss and come up with ways to improve it. Probably the biggest barrier to getting lots of people involved in insect conservation is that so many of us are afraid of bugs, which is due in no small part to the fact that some of them can really hurt you if you're not careful. One of the most infamous examples of this is the bullet ant, whose sting is claimed to hurt as much as being shot. We recently tested this legend for ourselves, and whether you're scared of insects or starting to come around, I think you'll find what we learned to be fascinating. Check out that video with the link on your screen. You will not want to miss it. And with that, we hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one.